everyone, welcome to the Holistic Birth Podcast, where we put the power in families' hands to have the safe, satisfying journey they deserve. My name is Allison. And I'm Bridget. We are two doulas who love bringing information along with inspiration to help you feel confident and powerful in your choices throughout the birthing year. We cover all topics around pregnancy, birth, and beyond. We're so glad you're here. Let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome back to the Holistic Birth Podcast. This is episode seven, and we're going to talk about undisturbed birth. We'll explain what it is, um, why you may want to consider it, um, and I think um, why don't we go? We'll just get started immediately. Bridget, what is undisturbed birth? Yeah, so undisturbed birth is you know it's pretty just that honestly <laughs> is undisturbed um, but what that can mean is um, really giving you the opportunity to have a physiological birth um, so where you are completely undisturbed you have set your environment so you are in a place of feeling very safe um, so the hormones of um, labor can really do their thing and your body can do what it's designed to do so um, mm-hmm. yeah Allison can you tell us about um the hormones of labor sure awesome. yeah so the big the big one the one we always think about when we're thinking about labor is oxytocin oxytocin is also called the love hormone it's released during like bonding times and um, like during breastfeeding um, intimacy it's kind of the main hormone we think about when considering uter- uterine contractions there's also estrogen which does increase um, later in your pregnancy to help make your uterus more sensitive to oxytocin there's prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are um, that hormone that helps to ripen your cervix, um, like your fruit. Um, <laughs> so it helps to soften um, the cervix um, and allows it to open. Um, there's also relaxin, which does exactly that. It's your all your ligaments and muscles will loosen and relax um, in preparation of the labor. A lot of pe- clients, uh, one especially last week, just asked, like, how is it possible my body will make any more room for this baby? And I said, relaxin will be on your side. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also melatonin. That's another hormone to think about. Uh, melatonin and oxytocin do work together synergistically. Uh, that's why our labor usually starts at night or it will ramp up at night. Um, sometimes it'll kind of quiet during the day and then kind of, um, yeah, charge ahead at night. Um, but our natural instinct is that we do want it to be dark and quiet and safe to give birth, which is a huge part of undisturbed birth. Yes. There are also beta endorphins. Those hormones um, usually create these sensations of pleasure, euphoria, and dependency. It does make a really great pain reliever. Um, and also baby secrete helps to secrete that um, when you're like it's found in breast milk. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. Part of that cool. journey. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, one of the big ones is catecholamines, which is also like in a form of adrenaline. Um, there's definitely a fine balance between all the hormones, but um, catecholamines do help with um, that right before baby is born. They peak so that there's um, a little bit more of that promotion of the fetal ejection reflex, um, which usually only happens when birth is undisturbed. What is the fetal ejection reflex, Bridget? <laughs> this one, I really, is yeah. so cool to me. Like, I always <laughs> tell my clients about it, and they're like, whoa, what is the fetal ejection reflex? Um, so it's really amazing to witness. Um, if you look up, like, I mean, it does happen in hospitals, too, but there is in, it is in a lot of, like, home birth, uh, birth center um, videos, that sort of thing. Um, and basically, the baby just kind of shoots out but what's actually happening is the uterus the uterus is i got a really crazy visual I know, with that. Like, shoo, you know <laughs> flying out um but it, i mean it doesn't happen exactly like that but, but they do come out pretty quickly yes. um so the uterus is working really hard because it's a muscle and all those hormones that allison was just talking about really work together especially um the catecholamines um because that's adrenaline and that's usually at the point where um someone that's in labor will be like oh my gosh I can't do this and that's like at that point where they're kind of you know freaking out a little bit and everything seems very intense and overwhelming um that's when that hormone is really you know peaking at that point and the uterus is actually pushing from the top and it's doing all the work essentially for you your again your body's amazing it knows exactly what to do um so yeah your uterus will basically push down on the baby and will um basically just 
push the baby out for you. And I've, a lot of um, women will say they don't even have to push. Like mm-hmm. the uterus is just doing all the work and their body's doing all the work and the baby just comes out without them actually having needing any coach, coach pushing and that sort of thing. Um, so this really, ha- the fetal rejection reflex really does happen mostly with undisturbed birth. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, again, those hormones are all working in- together and the uterus can can do what it what it's what it does yeah so yeah yeah and oxytocin is definitely um something that we want to help promote throughout all of labor it will help obviously with making progress with stronger surges and it will kind of um help peak your like intuitive parts um of of your body and, and your birthing experience um and really oxytocin is released when you're in a safe um private and supported environment so um the best ways to kind of promote that undisturbed birth and to help oxytocin flow are to really tune in on the environment i mean if you think about uh, a mammal in the wild um they don't just decide to give birth wherever they will please they usually choose some place that is safe and they know um they can labor and birth their their baby, um, you know, safely. If for some reason there is a threat or something like that, their fight or flight kicks in, their stress response kicks in, they cannot proceed. Their labor literally will pause in order to kind of wait for that safe place to be again. So, um, we're kind of the same with, um, if there's a lot of, if there are a lot of, um, stimuli or unsafe people around us or anything like that, it can reduce how our, progress is going to be over overall I've had clients that um weirdly kind of like will have like a pause in their labor during um certain when certain people are in the room like I've been at a home birth before where like they totally didn't love that their grandfather was staying in the doorway just kind of like (laughs) how you doing honey you know obviously meaning well but they're kind of like oh good and then like things kind of paused for a little while they had longer breaks in between surges and then once he had okay I'm just gonna go make you something to eat they then resumed um, like maybe like an hour later. But um, even in a, a hospital setting, I've seen people where they really loved their nurse, really, really loved them. And then they left because of change of shift. And um, that relationship wasn't yet established with the new nurse. And it kind of that change of shift actually paused their labor. But really anything you can do to avoid inhibitors of oxytocin are the goal so avoid bright unnatural lighting fluorescent lights kick them off um if you're able to have like led tea lights or any candles if you're in like a uh, an environment that does allow open flame um then that can be really helpful um obviously high or excessive noise levels can influence how you're feeling there's definitely something to be said about like music you've chosen like you might want like spa music or massage music I've also had clients totally rock it out to like disturbed that band you know oh my gosh I've had yeah. people do that I've seen them in concert <laughs> oh nice nice I've, I, I had someone who like who yeah she she was listening to disturbed Down like with the sickness yeah yeah she like was pumping <laughs> herself up and um That's funny but yeah I I'll probably end up talking about her another time because that was such an awesome birth. Um, Sounds like it. Me too. That was pretty <laughs> cool. Um, but like whatever noises are soothing to you, like that obviously could be disturbed or whatever, you know, music you like. Um, country weirdly is not something I see a lot in, yeah. um, which I like country, mm-hmm. but um, it's, I think it depends on the, it depends on if you're just like going bro country or you want like acoustic or whatever, but. Did you say the, bro country? Yeah. I've never heard that That's term. like the thinking Blake Shelton's and oh the okay Jason Aldean's. like okay <laughs> some good music country. um but it's like this like and my girl's in the truck and yeah oh, and I right. got me gotcha. a beer it's yeah. like <laughs> it's bro country I love that that's so funny I've never I def- heard it called I did that. not make that up I actually wrote a paper on why bro country is like a putting like a downfall to country music I wrote a paper literally in college oh about my that. gosh that's hilarious <laughs> bro oh country. my god I yeah. love it anyway yeah. <laughs> anyway but like it does depend the music that you play does matter but if there are beeps or noises or extra conversation or anything that sounds very disruptive or it's not rhythmic or doesn't kind of fall into like white noise then that also can be inhibiting oxytocin yeah um for sure and also anything that really gives you the sense that you're being watched but like not by like helpful people like if mm. it's like observers in the room for some people that really impacts greatly how safe they're feeling um I was just at a birth maybe two or three weeks ago and there was a you know very well-meaning 
um, paramedic who had stepped into the room and he was just standing like in the doorway just kind of like I, th- I don't know if it was part of a rotation for him or a training or something um, but I remember like looking and being like yeah, that seems out of uh, it was just out of order out of out of the norm and so I kind of looked to the my client and I was like are you okay with observers and she's like, I don't care so she didn't care but mm-hmm. for some people yeah. that could be very distracting I yeah that could be super distracting especially if someone didn't first say are you okay with it and also you can change your mind if you did say yeah that's fine I don't care and then it was actually a distraction you can k- kick them out they don't need to be in yeah. there yeah. Um, but it's anyone who doesn't make you feel safe also is part of that so making sure that you feel really really connected and heard and supported by the people around you is going to help if you're feeling threatened by someone or if there's someone that's distracting you in a not helpful way or is kind of like you can feel their the pressure or some sort of presence or tension or something from them about their opinions or if it's like someone who means well but it's just like well at my birth I just did like that's not helpful um so yeah it's okay to ask for space from those people especially if you feel like maybe your labor is being impacted by those those things um but yeah definitely definitely keep all of that in mind with with thinking about yeah oxytocin inhibitors yes Um, definitely do you feel as like a doula do you feel like you see any impact being in a hospital setting or are there certain settings that um like it's impossible to have a undisturbed birth at yeah no I don't feel like I feel like you can have an undisturbed birth anywhere um it really just depends on who you have as like your birth team um having the right support is really important um so I mean you can absolutely advocate for yourself no matter where you are but if you're wanting to really essentially be very undisturbed you can set up your birth team where they're like you know they make sure that you're getting your your birth wishes met Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I do absolutely believe that it can happen anywhere. Cause mm-hmm. a lot of people, I get that question a lot, like, oh, can I really have an undisturbed birth if I'm in the hospital? And I say, absolutely. You know, you can definitely do that. Um, we just have to set the environment for you and mm-hmm. make sure the staff knows what your wants and desires are. And we can, we can make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's really just about, you know, feeling the safest you possibly can, as you've mentioned before. So yeah, um, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, are there some examples of things you could implement in a hospital setting that just like maybe an example or two that would help with promoting undisturbed birth? Um, Yeah. So are you mean like environmental kind of stuff or yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. So I mean having, you know, requesting minimal staff in the room, like only having them come in, you know, when they need to like check you know, heart rates or something like that every hour, even at that point, if you don't even want that, just having minimal people come in at all, you can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, you know, have again, your staff just uh, alert somebody if there may be something that doesn't feel right or whatever. Um, and then yeah, shutting off all the lights, um, having, you know, smell that you enjoy, like you mentioned, like music is a big one, or if you want it completely quiet, Mm -hmm. um, you can have, you know, led candles or, um, real candles if you're at home, um yeah just really setting that um environment to be as dark and quiet as possible Mm -hmm. is really going to help with being undisturbed yeah I feel so yeah and that's a I think that's a big job that we sometimes are we kind of take on as a doula is to make sure that certain environmental like elements are in place or certain Mm -hmm. things aren't in place um I, I feel like we usually come with some sort of Mary Poppins bag of like, yes, it's just a pit of, I don't even know what's in there anymore because so much is in there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yep. I can pull out a lamp <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would not be surprised. Right. Um, but yeah, I think, um, like it's okay to turn to your doula and you, and your partner, if you don't have a doula or just to rely on both of them to, um, kind of like help with promoting that safe environment of what yeah. what feels good to you um I've I feel like I've just walked into a room as a doula when it's like I'm first arriving I just assess like how are things going I jump in if needed but I kind of tend to like kind of flutter around like as like a little wallflower for like when I first arrive at a birth and usually if things aren't already set then um 
then I, I don't have to do too much. But usually I kind of come in and start dimming lights, if especially if people have told me that that's helpful. And it's not that you aren't capable of making that decision or doing it yourself in labor. It's like really nice to just not expend the energy. Yeah, even think in, about it. To be in charge of it. Yeah. Right. And so to tell your partner, to tell your doula, like I really, like, these are the clear intentions I have for what makes me feel best with like an environment. Um everyone feels safe with different things so like just communicating that to your people too for yeah sure. yeah definitely and just you know yeah again communicating and if you want your doula or your partner to be literally your voice and saying like you know I don't want this I, I do want that or whatever so you don't have to respond to anything you can just be in be in your labor land and be undisturbed then you can do that you just have to you know voice that you that's what you need is for mm-hmm. them to to essentially just talk for you and you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, is um, if something does disturb, you know, one of your clients um, during labor, um, do you have like uh, techniques or anything that you recommend doing to like get them back into rhythm of being undisturbed? Like you mm-hmm. mentioned, um, you know, like even if it's like a car ride to the hospital or, you know, anything like that where, you know, medical staff comes in that they're not crazy about or something like that and they just kind of want to get back in that rhythm and their labor is paused or something, do you have, like, techniques to, that you really recommend that they, they try? Because I feel like a lot of people worry, like, oh, no, I got disturbed and now I'm, you know, not going to be able to get back into the rhythm. Mm-hmm. So I think it might be helpful to, to say yeah. that it's possible or if it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you kind of – you really are trying to – focus but not in like a logical way you're just kind of like in the zone and so then I think it's usually pretty obvious to people when they feel like I don't think I'm in the zone anymore or I think I've sort of stepped out and it it can be it can feel a little frantic at first because it's almost like a fish out of water like you were swimming you were in your groove and then all of a sudden you're kind of like like pulled out of what you were doing Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but it's definitely very possible to find your rhythm again um and to kind of sink back into that more like undisturbed like peaceful kind of space um I guess the first things that come to mind are is if there's anything environmental that shifted like say someone came in your midwife came in you're like napping on bed or something and um she like flips on a little light to check in on you or something just let's let's just turn that back off and she can chat with you in the dark if you want to um just little things about the environment that had shifted how can we set reset those if it's something that's more like an, an, a deeper level than that, it's not just like the environment shifted. It's like something like a really deep conversation was had to be had or um, whatever whatever it was was a little bit more disruptive to you. Um, I definitely recommend thinking about Penny Simpkins' three R's, um, mm, yeah. rhythm, relaxation, and ritual. So w- whatever rhythms you were in before, sometimes they might not work the same for you immediately, um, but falling back into into things that are going to be really the best um for what you're what the situation you're in at that point is um but yeah so rhythm is thinking about um start moving start swaying start rocking start um going in circles sit on the birth ball um get in the tub um find some sort of thing that you're doing with your body that's in your control that you're able to kind of tune back into that um becomes this like um, routine rhythmic thing. Um, so yeah, any sort of movement. So rhythm relaxation would be, um, adding in like massage or, um, changing the music. Um, the tub like hydrotherapy could be really helpful. Um, it could be, um, listening to affirmations or a guided meditation. It could be, um, asking your doula to kind of like walk you through some sort of like ritual or specific like meditation or something. Um, I know I a lot of times will use like the body scan for my clients. So say like a big like shift had happened in the room and the energy is kind of off and everyone's kind of left. And now we've reclaimed like, okay, the room's ours again to like, let's just reset. Um, Sometimes I encourage her to, right, start at your, start at your toes, you know, wiggle those, let them kind of loosen, Mm. um, pay attention to like the sensations, then go to your ankles. What, what, what are you feeling there? And then just basically I verbally just help them climb up their body with Mm just kind of reacclimating yourself to what your body is doing or feeling or what you're noticing um 
And as we're going, I encourage them to like, okay, now that you've passed your toes, let them relax. Okay, now that you're back to your knee, like usually we have tension that we're holding on yeah, to course, when yeah. these disruptions happen. Mm-hmm. And so anything like with the movement, like with relaxation or that body scan to be able to release again and to sink back into whatever mm. rhythm or undisturbed place that you were in, those can be really helpful. And then the ritual really is just kind of the rep- repetitive motion of all of it together. Yeah. You know? yep. So just finding um, whether it's... Um, you know, you've like relit the candles or you've um, kind of like had some time with your partner or your doula to kind of reset um, or even simply just going into the bathroom by yourself. Yeah. Shut that door, sit on the toilet, hashtag dilation station <laughs> and j- just sink into that room yeah. and just kind of like sensations wise yeah. like, unplug. Yeah. You know? definitely. So I guess those would be the first things that come to mind for for some tips. Yeah, speaking of the bathroom, I've heard of, like, so many women, if, like, with home birth and stuff like that, sometimes they'll just lock themselves in the mm-hmm. bathroom with the lights off and have yeah. their baby in the bathroom by themselves. <laughs> well, they don't lock themselves in there, but, you know, they'll close the door. Mm-hmm. Or even their bedroom, they'll just go in their bedroom and just sit in the dark and have their babies in there or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot to be said about, like, you know, just even isolating yourself if you need to mm-hmm. so and, so, and some people are very into like they're just very independent like, yeah i've been yeah. there's a home birth that i can think of that she we were all just hanging out in the rest of her house mm-hmm. and she was off doing whatever she was doing in labor like no yeah. one really knew because we were right. all in there to check on her refill her water and then yep. give her space again and yep. that's exactly what she wanted she called on us when she needed us um she would come back out it was almost like this deer was em- like a lion was emerging from like the back of the house <laughs> yeah. and we would kind of just like get quiet and um, not stare at her or make her feel like weird or anything but just kind of like be like holding space she'd come out to like get a snack or something but mm-hmm. um, I've also seen people who really like touch or like the presence and the safety yeah. of their partner or yep. their doula so if that's also part of it they don't have to say anything they don't even have to touch you if you are overwhelmed like that but if they are a safe person to you them just being present um I've crocheted at births before or in my yeah. book it doesn't even have to be that I'm actively doing anything but it's like that calming presence of someone that you know like they care about you and that they're there to just hold space like sometimes that can be really important too just sounds so simple but yeah yeah I could definitely go either way whereas you know someone may just want to be left alone or they may really need that support surrounding them so they can feel safe Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah Yeah. go either way yeah yeah but especially if you're worried about certain scenarios feel free to reach out we're always available by email put a comment on Instagram comment on YouTube whatever it is um we're always here and happy to help answer questions about any scenarios or if you have anything else that you um, that comes up for you with this topic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in this time around. Yeah, we thank you. We hope to see you next week and we hope you have a good rest of your day or night wherever you are. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. That's it for this topic. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the show notes for any resources or links that we mentioned today. Make sure to subscribe and follow us on your preferred podcast platform and also be sure to give us a review. It really helps us grow and reach more people who could benefit from this info. Also check us out on YouTube and visit our blog where we have this podcast transcribed for you. We'd love to connect over social media too. And we're just an email away if you have any questions or if you want to request a topic to be covered. We hope this helps your mind, body, and soul in having the supported and holistic journey you are so deserving of. Embrace the power within you.